this is what I would like to do, voting. I have some Bible verses on the subject of worship. I am going to read this Bible verse, and you are going to tell me what it means or what it doesn't mean, based on the Bible verse without reading into it. Do I get to choose? Either to tell you what it means or to tell you what it doesn't mean? You can do whatever you want. Okay. All right? Let's do 2 Samuel 6.14. David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. Go. The discussion around dancing in church and its biblical basis often brings up various perspectives and interpretations. Here are key points on the matter. The example of David dancing before the Lord in 2 Samuel 6.14 is sometimes cited. Critics argue this was a cultural expression and not a directive for worship practices. Understanding dancing in its historical and cultural context is essential. In ancient Israel, dancing was a part of celebrations, but its role in worship practices can be debated. Some believe that worship should be structured and solemn, avoiding emotional outbursts. This perspective emphasizes reverence and orderliness in worship settings. While dancing in church is not explicitly commanded in the Bible, some argue it is permissible as an expression of joy and celebration in worship, aligning with the spirit of various psalms, aligning with the spirit of various psalms, EUA key Psalm 150. When you dance in church, wear linen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making that. All right. Therefore, David danced in church. Dancing in church is biblical. Huh? Can I use this for a text? Sure. So you don't have a problem with dancing in the church? I do. But this verse says, David danced. You can use whatever you want to use, right? All right, well, um, tell me why. But this first of all, David wasn't in church. Okay, fair enough. That's but he, was, he did it in worship. David wasn't in church. It was in, he was worshiping the Lord. Yeah. Very excited about the ark. He was very excited about the ark. Yes. Yes. Um, we don't have an ark. Well, okay. We don't have a king. But I could do that with any verse. We don't have it. But what I'm saying is that when we read this, we have to read this text in its historical context All right. in order to understand okay, what's so, happening so, here. Okay, right? so... Because the other thing is this. Narrative is not normative. Correct. It's a very important principle of, of exegesis. Narrative is not normative. Just because something happened doesn't mean that it's supposed to happen normatively. But, there, but right? there's shadings on that. You know that. Vadi Bacham a prominent Christian leader, holds the view that dancing in church is not a biblical practice. He emphasizes a more conservative approach to worship. The discussion about Kirk Franklin's music and its place in Christian worship, especially in the context of dancing, brings up several critical points. Kirk Franklin is a prominent figure in contemporary gospel music, known for blending gospel with hip-hop, pop, and other secular music styles. His energetic performances and modern sound have attracted a wide audience. Okay, now, okay, this is actually, let's, let's, let's keep diving on this. So David isn't dancing in church, so I can't say. So for example. David, David for example, danced, I can dance. Yeah, you can. For, but that would be more akin to, we've excommunicated someone. And we're here at worship. This person we've excommunicated, it was a painful experience for the church. We've been praying for this person. Their life just went to the pit. And God saves them and brings them back. Right. And they walk through the doors. There might be a little dancing. That's more akin to what's happening there. An emotional, you know, sort of outburst in response to a circumstance as opposed to here's how we're going to organize our worship. Vadi Bauckham has been vocal in his criticism of Kirk Franklin's music, arguing that it blurs the lines between sacred and secular music. Vadi Bauckham emphasizes that Franklin's music often mimics secular styles and includes performances and visuals that he finds inappropriate for Christian worship. He argues that this approach dilutes the spiritual message of gospel music. There's a famous quote by Charles Spurgeon that says, a time will come when instead of the shepherds feeding the sheep, will have clowns entertaining the goats. Well, I think that time is here. Oh, why y'all ooing and eye? Y'all seen this 40-foot trampoline in here? 
far be it for me to say who's saved and who's not saved, but sometimes people just give you signs, give you glaring declarations of who they are. And sometimes you ought to believe them. You ought to just trust the signs sometimes. And with him, with Mike Todd and that church, it is hard to imagine that this man is a Christian. Now, I do use one of his statements quite often. I think it's a very apt statement to use in many cases. You can be saved and stupid. Tweet that. You can be saved and stupid. Yeah, so you can be saved and stupid, but I also know that you can look like you're saved and be stupid. And I think that's what's happening here. Matter of fact, I don't even, I don't even think we can even say that, that he looks like he's saved. He doesn't act like it. And then the people that are there, they go there for this show. This What he is is a carnival barker. What he is is a ringmaster. This is a circus. And like he says, clowns entertaining goats. Maybe this is another clown entertaining other clowns or people who don't know any better. It's hard to even imagine the folks that go there would actually want the word. Here's what the Bible says. Peter says this. He says, like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word of God uh, for the word so that you may grow in it in respect to salvation. If you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, that's indeed if you have tasted. It's hard to imagine that these people have. Uh, thank you, Lord, for my word. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Y'all, look at my word. The irony of him saying, thank you, Lord, for my word. Well, you're not, it's not the word. And then just think about this. A giant 40-foot trampoline in the middle of the sanctuary where people should be sitting to hear the word. You have this there to put on a demonstration, to put on a show. <laughs> look what God has given me. Big old word. An expansive word. I'm sitting on my word. But the potential for this word to actually take me higher is based on what I do after I get it. The word of God, and I think he's speaking that he's got some sort of individual word, some sort of little prophetic word, their own little private interpretation or inspiration from the Lord is what he's speaking of. But the word he should be focusing on is the word of God. And in that regard, none of this stuff is to be applied how he's using it. And most people, when they get a word from God, it's not a catalyst to take them higher. It's something that becomes pressure that they get under. Oh, you weren't expecting the example to go here. We were expecting you to do any and everything. Why? Because that is who you are. You tend to do ridiculous and crazy things. You tend to make a spectacle of the sanctuary. There's a debate within the Christian community about the appropriateness of contemporary styles in worship. Traditionalists like Vadi Bakum advocate for worship that aligns strictly with biblical teachings and traditional practices, emphasizing simplicity, humility, and reverence. They believe that worship music should focus on spiritual edification rather than entertainment. Critics worry that blending gospel with secular influences can lead to a superficial understanding of faith and spirituality, especially among younger audiences. They argue that this approach may prioritize emotionalism and entertainment over genuine spiritual growth and adherence to biblical principles. Supporters of traditional worship often cite biblical passages such as Ephesians 5.19 and Colossians 3.16, which encourage singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in one's heart to the Lord. These verses are used to endorse a more traditional and reverent approach to worship music. These points reflect a range of interpretations, with some emphasizing strict adherence to biblical examples and others allowing for cultural expressions of worship.